Don't forget to subscribe, like and share and comment. 2023 Genesis GV73.5 T Sport Prestige I can't imagine many GV70 customers will be using their little SUV to tow, but that's exactly what I did on a cross-country drive to move some of my more fragile items. Equipped with a beefy-looking hitch and trailer brakes, the GV70 is rated to tow up to 3,500 pounds, and the loaded trailer was safely under that number. With the trailer hooked up, something the backup camera makes super easy, the GV70 remained as comfortable and quiet as it is on its own. The engine easily dealt with the stress and made short work of mountain passes. It'd stay in 7th gear occasionally, but there wasn't any hunting between the top gears. Great handling doesn't really factor into what people think are good towing vehicles, but it's incredibly important. The responsive steering, strong brakes, excellent ride and body control all benefit the driver of the GV70 when a big weight is tied to its tail. Stability was excellent, even in crosswinds. Fuel economy with the trailer came in at 14 miles per gallon. The interior also was filled with boxes, which further weighed down the GV70. The lane keep and radar cruise driving aids are things I don't typically use, but out of sheer boredom in West Texas, I gave them a chance. A little bit of torque is required on the wheel, and it'll occasionally find itself playing pong with the lane markers, but mostly it throws the GV70 right down the middle. A great audio system is a wonderful thing to have for a long drive, and the GV70's 16-speaker lexicon system ensured I didn't miss a lip smack or a throat clearing on podcasts and remained clear and vibrant when playing music. Seat comfort is critical to enjoying a long drive too. I'd say these are 4-hour seats, but with the tank lasting about 250 or so miles, the seat comfort coincides with the range while towing. The GV70's infotainment interface is easy to use, but even after living with it for over 2,500 miles, I still contend that Genesis got the rotary infotainment control and the rotary shifter backwards. The touchscreen works well enough that you don't need the rotary dial, but whenever I reached for the shifter, I'd grab the infotainment knob. Not too many other gripes. Well, the power windows are a little slow to go up and down. You notice these things when you eat as much fast food as I did. All of those interstate miles also gave us ample time to explore the GV70's semi-automated driver assist feature. Highway Driving Assist 2 Adaptive Cruise Control with Automated Lane Centering does a great job, so long as the road is fairly straight. It has a hard time negotiating curvier divided highways, even though the adaptive cruise control slows down for sharper curves. In fact, it sometimes slows to Sunday driver speeds, and if you press the accelerator to override it, an admonishment to drive carefully appears in the head-up display. Having the adaptive cruise control adjust its speed based on navigation info is a feature that can be switched off, and there is a high degree of customizability for the various driver aids. We've roundly praised the GV70's chic interior, but the exterior design is garnering mixed reviews. Flamboyant and not attractive to my tastes were among deputy video editor Carlos Lago's comments. The tapered tail exterior design cuts into cargo space, which behind the rear seat seems not much better than a large sedan's, said another commenter. In fact, the GV70 can accommodate seven carry-on sized suitcases behind the rear seat, that's the same as the more square-bodied BMW X3 but well shy of the Cadillac XT5, which fits 10. With the rear seatbacks folded, the GV70 has room for 22 carry-ons, versus 20 for the X3 and 24 for the commodious Caddy. In another measure of interior utility, the GV70 fared less well. Here's Senior Features Editor, and new father, Greg Fink, now that I have a baby. I have newfound understanding of the importance of latch anchor locations, and the GV70s don't quite make the cut. They're difficult to access, requiring too much digging between the seat back and seat cushion. Maybe it's because we haven't done all that much kid toting, but the interior of our GV70 is showing little to no signs of wear as we cross the 20,000 mile mark. More like 23,000 miles, but who's counting? Genesis offers an extensive color palette on the GV70, including hues such as Barossa Burgundy and Cardiff Green. But due to supply shortages we settled for a pre-built car that's finished in a uni white, a $500 option. We're not complaining about the dull white on black livery, but there surely are more interesting options. The 3.5T features oversized dual tailpipes that poke through the black mesh surround on the rear bumper for a more extroverted look than the upright pentagonal exhaust tips on the 2.5T. The V6 model also gets black trim on the bumpers and side skirts. In its comparison test win. We said that the GV70 puts an exclamation point on Genesis's ability to compete in the heart of the luxury market. Over the next 40,000 miles, we'll let you know if that punctuation still stands.
Thank you. Don't forget to subscribe, like and share and comment.